Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 208 of Category 5 Technology TV. Great to see you. It's Tuesday, September the 13th. 13th. September 13th. Yeah, hey, it's great, great to, to be back, Robbie. Nice to have you here, Eric. Thank you for having me. How have you been? I am well. It's been forever. You've been I, working Tuesday nights? I've been working. I've been, yeah, I've been teaching some guitar. I've been doing some other yeah, stuff. How's I've that been, going? It's, you know, I don't have any virtuosos, uh, you know. Making any records or anything yet, but yeah, I got yeah. some really cool students. Yeah. It's, it's been good. Cool. Very good. It's been fun. Uh, it's great yes. to see. Yeah. Well, at this age, it's great to be seen. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's Keith Richards' line. <laughs> it's now an Eric Kid line. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Captured. Great to see everybody uh, on the uh, in the chat room there. Gadwell, hey, Das Bomber. We have Chris Wright toys. just in here. We have geek toys yeah, on the set. Aren't those great? <laughs> did awesome. you? Did you? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Ooh. I was Uh-oh. really just waiting for an opportunity okay, to do there that. There you go. Well, well, we'll do those later over over a cup of tea. All right. Yes. No, that's from last week's show where you uh, we, I we started working on stop motion video. Oh. And what was really I cool? Oh, we, here, there he is. There. There he is. There's we, my guy on on my computer screen. Right yeah. on your computer screen. There he screen. is. There he is. And what was really cool is we've already started receiving uh, submissions for the contest, uh, voiceover uh, contest. Um, so those are really, really super cool. We're going to uh, probably talk about those. Uh, we've got a couple of emails there. We'll get to them if we can uh, tonight. So I, I'd love to chat about uh, about the the voiceover contest a little bit. Well, that'll be fun. Basically, we did some stop motion last week, Hillary and I, and uh, we, we used these characters to do the stop motion video, and viewers are taking the opportunity to add their own voiceovers. Was this Hillary? Yes, that was, uh, that was okay. Hillary, and, uh, and I was Sulu. And uh, and it was it was really awesome. Now she <laughs> she she dominated the uh, the fight, but it's oh, all well, good. That's, that's all good. The other thing that's been happening is that uh, people have been doing their own stop motion with clay or with Lego or whatever oh, okay. else, uh, being inspired since the show. So it's been really neat to see some of the the messages that have that have come in. Um, this week we're going to be looking at uh, a whole bunch of awesome stuff. One of the things we're going to be looking at is LibreOffice and making sure that it loads as fast as possible. Um, we're going to talk about that, but we've also got lots of viewer questions. Eric's going to be talking there to are, us about what's coming questions. up in the news. We've got lots of stuff going on in the newsroom. I'll let you. We, we, ha- we have testimonials. Tell us what's going we have on. Yeah. newsroom. Um, do you want me to tell you what's going on in the newsroom? Please. I can tell you. I can tell you right now. So, coming up in the newsroom, Windows clone React OS could get a massive boost with funding from the Russian president. Um, That's cool. Yeah, that is very cool. Uh, Carol Bartz has been fired as the CEO of Yahoo. Sorry, I'm going to try to behave tonight. <laughs> Microsoft's cloud services spent 2.5 hours offline, raising concerns Yikes. about the cloud. Uh, a defunct NASA satellite weighing in at 6 tons, that's metric tons, is going to hit Earth in the next month. Stick around. These stories and others are coming up in about 30 minutes. Very cool. Thanks, Eric. You are very welcome. What do you think of your new chair? I love my new chair. I don't know if you can see these uh, friends. There it is. There there you go. (laughs) So uh, what I actually did is I had... uh, I had my son give me a hand with these, and, and so I actually tweeted this week, Zek is assembling one of these chairs for me, thinking I might give this one to my co-host. Okay. Well, I was going to say, there is a little bit of a list to the port on this one, but is that well done, Zek. He did a pretty good job for <laughs> a four-year-old. Yeah. You know? yeah. He, he yeah. had a lot of fun uh, and really enjoyed doing a project with Dad. Um, and there he is. That is kind of cool. Yeah. We had a good time. All right. Um, on Twitter this week, lots of stuff came in as i was saying uh some people have been experimenting with um with stop motion video since seeing it on the show very cool stuff mark the try geek says i am having way <laughs> pardon me that cough came out of nowhere way I'm having way too much fun <laughs> making stop motion film with my son's lego 
Next up, lightsaber battle. Yoda versus who could it be? By the way, it's Robbie Ferguson's fault. And that's how you can uh, message me on Twitter. It's at Robbie Ferguson, as Mark the Trigeek has done there. Mathman47, a.k.a. Dennis Finnegan, says, Robbie Ferguson, perfect for stop action. Found the Pico Dolly, good for small spinning shots. Uh, coolest gadgets and uh, check out that link very cool device and we're going to actually uh, he actually took the time to send in an, a detailed email as well so oh, we'll really? be taking a look at that all right and i think mark the try geek kind of inspired me to think up something a little silly and i'll just i'll just kind of put that up for you tell me if you get this you can't imagine my disappointment when i realized we weren't going to meet yoda after all but just do a bunch of stupid stretches I'm confused. He didn't get it. My wife says, I, I saw the tweet, but I didn't get it. If you get it, post in the chat room. I'll give you 50 viewer points. 50 of them? Wow. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Uh, yes, <laughs> D-Man A10 for 50 viewer points has got it. The reference, Chris Reich, I'll give you some too. The reference to yoga. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you that guys. is very punny. Yes, and, and a I pun suppose. is about the lowest form of humor, unless, of, in fact, yeah. you were the person. You know, with 140 Unless you were the though, one who came up with the pun, I guess, and then it doesn't well, seem Well, I wrote so, the tweet. Seem, yeah, so it's, you probably didn't find it to be such a low form of humor. Yeah. For the rest of the I also, poor... I also had wondered this week if James Brown ever woke up in a funk. <laughs> oh, no. We have uh, some viewer testimonials that were submitted this week. Uh, we'll take a look, quick look at that. Have you got those up by any chance? <laughs> I'm not sure I can do this anymore. <laughs> okay. You can well, submit a viewer testimonial on our website. It's category 5. I think I'll do that TV. right now. Yeah. That guy in the green shirt. Oh. <laughs> Should get a haircut. Yeah. Okay. It's getting a little long, isn't it? Well, let's see. We have, a, have some testimonials here. I've got, uh, let's see, uh, right over here, if you click on Interact, and sub, uh, you'll see viewer testimonials, and you can submit your own, and there's also, uh, you can review some of the testimonials that have come in. I've got one that actually came in. This is the first one that ever came in for Major Tom the Fish. It says, hey, Major Tom, congratulations on your cool space home. My cat is a big fan of you. Every time she sees you, she has that big smile on her face. Anyways, happy floating, and best greets to Commander Robbie and his ground control engineers as well. That comes to us from Andy in Switzerland. Wow. You know, I used to watch Commander Tom. I think it was a station out of Buffalo, New York. Really? There was Commander. The guy's name was Tom Joles, and it was on, I think it was out of Buffalo, New York. Well, this is Major Commander. Tom. Oh, it was Commander Tom. You're right. So this, this is Major Tom. Yeah, I'm... Just completely My wrong. My fish is higher rank. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, and then we've got that. Yeah, you can take away. Uh, we've got one there from Here's Lakeport, from California. The uh, the Buckmasters. Oh, where are you uh, looking? Yeah, I'm looking okay. right there. Yeah. Okay. Well, hi, that. Robbie and gang. My hey. family really likes the show. Your Cheers. production quality has greatly improved over the years. I've gotten such the runaround from different OS and hardware manufacturers. So He's had such a runaround from so many different OS and hardware manufacturers that he moved to Linux. I currently dual boot with my newest system that came with Windows 7. 7 seems to be okay if I don't mind Microsoft owning my time with their updates. I would not have uh, a use for them if I get my GPL2 HP plotter recognized in Linux. Hmm. Any distro suggestions? Thank you again, the Buckmasters. For an from HP plotter. Lakeport, California. The Buckmasters. The whole family sitting down and watching yeah. the show. Nice to have you here. That's um, cool. As far as finding a distro that will, su that will work with your uh, HP plotter, um, I, we'd have to if, if throw me the the model number, but I think you you'd have just as much luck to get into Google. How old is the device, and and uh, what kind of support does it get? Um, good place to look. When you say plotter, though, I'm I'm envisioning a rather large yeah, it's printing usually device. something that's used with uh, more of the CAD yeah. drawing mm -hmm. stuff, a uh, little bigger than your average uh, inkjet or laser. I just wonder does does. CUPS or CUPS support um, plotters. That's a that's a question that I don't know the answer to. Let's see. 
we we'd want to look into that. I think if you if you have the model number, we could help you try to find what uh, what driver you could get for your Linux system. I don't know that it's going to be a specific distro. I'm really enjoying Zorin OS right now, to be honest yeah. with you. Uh, Zorin OS Ultimate. It's ten euros to buy it, and it's it's really good. It's I'm really enjoying it. Uh, and I see that some viewers have actually uh, made the switch to Zorin OS as well, which is an Ubuntu-based distro. So it's a, you know, it is Ubuntu at, at its heart, which is Debian at its heart. Um, so you still tap into those repositories that Ubuntu uh, are so famous for, but you get the advantage of really sleek, really clean um, operating system that's that's built for, I think, you, the user, as well. All right. Well, that's it for uh, testimonials tonight. Just the, the two that came in this week, and, and oh, okay. we've got this. Um, I've been encouraging viewers uh, and encourage you to actually send us a, uh, a postcard, an actual physical postcard. Wow. Find one that, uh, that has a picture of your town or something that reminds you of your country, and, uh, and send that our way. You'll find our postal box on our website, category5.tv. Scroll to the very bottom or go to Contact Us, and uh, you'll, you'll, uh, oh, we'd love to receive a postcard because uh, yeah, snail absolutely. mail is kind of... Snail mail is uh, is kind of slow these days. We don't get a lot of it anymore. Everybody submits okay. everything by email, you know, which is fine. Uh, we're we're not going to get into a Canada Post discussion tonight. Definitely not. We are not. We are. We talk about things that make us happy on this show. <laughs> that's that's our intention. All right. We are also not going to talk about postal strikes or anything of the sort. I want to see what you've got here. Whoa. I'd like to send you a year supply of free batteries. That would make me happy. Cat5.tv slash free batteries. Make sure you check them out. Ecoalkalines are eco-friendly, carbon-neutral batteries. The first batteries ever to be certified carbon-neutral. Check it out. Cat5.tv slash free batteries for your chance to win a full year supply. I kind of quickly did the math, and I thought, okay, well, if I was it's... Say, how do you determine what a year supply a is? A year supply you? of batteries is one pack of batteries a week, okay. which is, you know, it's that some people work. may go through more than yeah. that. You may go through less. but it, So you're looking, uh, average year, it's 52 packs of batteries. That's pretty decent. You take $7 really a pack of batteries, say, and all of a sudden it's like 350 to $400 worth of batteries. And it's like, that's pretty substantive. And you didn't and have to go out and get them, did you? You didn't have to go out and get them. Yeah. They come right to you. Anywhere in the world, because we'll ship them anywhere. Anywhere? How awesome is yeah, this is a worldwide show. I do my best to make sure that when we're sending out prizes, we wow. can send it anywhere in the world. Uh, so cat5.tv slash free batteries for your chance to win. What about St. Mary's Bay, Newfoundland? Like it's a we will send it an there. hour's drive to the nearest I will personally telephone. drive it there. Okay. Yeah? Is it a really? A boat ride, yeah, wow. apparently. <laughs> well, we'll send it there. I mean, <laughs> well, it'll get there. We'll find right. a way. We will find a way to get those batteries to you. Because I have faith that you are going to win this, friend. So yes. get on to cat5.tv slash free batteries for your chance. Of course, that guy in St. Mary's Bay probably doesn't have television access. I mean, internet access, so he's probably not watching us anyway. No? Well, he might be. That's wild. It's possible. Maybe he's got satellite. can't believe there's places without internet. <laughs> I mean, you can go, you can literally go to, uh, like, third world areas, if you will. I was just guessing. I... I've been and wrong before. They have high speed internet. So how and yeah. yet I know there are places yeah. you can go about a half hour north of here and there's no high speed internet. That doesn't I've make had, any sense. I've to had me. days at my house where there's been no internet. <laughs> <laughs> and the provider says, Oh, it's something you've changed, but it was a break in the line well, outside. But oh, okay. Well that's a little different yeah, though. But no But no. to actually not have access to high speed or to be just on the outskirts. I thought we were going to talk about things that made us happy. People were saying, well, it must be a really tiny town. Well, there's actually a town in Ontario called Tiny Township. And I've been told that they have... If you're watching from Tiny Township, let me know. But is it true that there's no high-speed internet? Wow. We need to petition or something. Find out what, what we need to do. Uh, before we jump into viewer questions, because I know we've got a lot to go through tonight. Yeah, we've got a it's few there. practically going to become a viewer question extravaganza, I believe, tonight. Um, but with the October 31st fest festivities coming up, you know... Oh, what, whatever is October 31st? Well, you know what happens is that Category 5 opens up the Category 5 costume store. Oh, yes. Yeah. We have a very, our very own official costume store. It's a year-round thing. 
Uh, you can get party supplies and everything else. But especially we're good at stocking the best costumes. Everything for grown-ups, kids, whatever you need. You can get on over. It's cat5.tv slash costumes. <laughs> Literally, that's all it is. Cat5.tv slash costumes. We've got a fantastic selection. Now's the time to order because we're going to be able to get those to you uh, r- just in perfect timing. Uh, you'd have them really, really quickly right now. Orders haven't started getting crazy yet. Okay. It's usually you know the last couple weeks that things really get crazy and we start running out of stuff. Uh, so that's you know a great chance for you to get a really exceptional costume. You remember my Starfleet costume from the I last year. I remember that. I actually picked that up in our own costume store. Wow. Fantastic. That is through our partnership with Party Mart, and Party Mart um, donates a, uh, a portion of each sale to Category 5, so you're actually indirectly helping support the show at the same time. Um, so if you're thinking about going out and buying a costume this year, make sure you first check out our costume store, cat5.tv slash costumes. All right. And I'll let you take it away with uh, with some oh. questions. JVSCC, I don't know. <laughs> well, here's something from Peter Lewis. This is not a question. I oh. We were looking for questions. It okay. could be a viewer statement, uh, for all we know, this, going into it. This is not a question, but some info he found on the Internet about GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Cool. Is that correct? When I was downloading a version of GIMP for Windows XP, this gives you GIMP on both Windows and Ubuntu, it also makes it possible to download help files for GIMP. So you can see http colon slash slash gimp dash win dot sourceforge dot net. GIMP dash win dot sourceforge dot net slash stable dot html. Okay. So that is in fa- that's fantastic and thank you for the uh, yeah. for the link um, it's actually kind of a roundabout way to get to the windows um, build of the gimp and it's it's having trouble loading on my system right now but what what I'll show you if you go over to gimp.org and again thank you for the tip because actually, I have it's gimp on my uh, my windows system yeah it's, you do uh, it's a great tool fantastic hey eh? still use photoshop but do you but yeah it uh, does some things exceedingly well. Mm. One day, I think we should have a, a, a battle between <laughs> GIMP and Photoshop because there are some things that GIMP does way, way better than Photoshop. Yes. There are a few things that Photoshop does better than GIMP. Sizing things, really. That's one of them. Photoshop but does with it. sync interpolation, it's quite good on the GIMP. Okay. So try that when you're resizing an image in the GIMP. If you're finding that it's lossy, you're probably using cubic interpolation. So when you go image image size, okay. Choose sync. Sync from the interpolation menu. It's a drop down. Okay. And see see if that helps. I'd love to know from you if if I that will, changes the I quality will try for that. Cuz maybe we've nipped that in the bud and you have no reason to go to Photoshop. Whoa. <laughs> Looking at their website, this is gimp.org. The official website of the gimp. The link that you're actually providing is if you go way down to the bottom of the website. We you see down. down. We down. Sounds like we're watching the friendly uh, giant, you know. Yeah, it's just like we that. Up. It's just like that. You know, we've got downloads for Unix or Linux, Windows or Mac OS 10. So if you click on the Windows one, and then we click up on the installer to download the Windows version. It's actually taking me to the one, the, the, the site that you're that you're mentioning in the email there. So for those who want to find that, you're absolutely right. This is a fantastic tool, but you can indirectly get it directly from GIMP.org because they link to this particular build, which is hosted on SourceForge, and it's a, a build of the GIMP for Windows. You can download that absolutely free. The GIMP, just so you know, as, as Eric and I are kind of hinting at, is, is an alternative to the rather expensive commercial tool Adobe Photoshop. Which is a fabulous tool. Right? Absolutely. It's a great tool. Yeah. However, free versus, yeah. If I went into a store and they had this steak and this steak, and this steak was 20 bucks, and this one they'll give me for free just to try it. And I can I can keep getting that steak for free <laughs> if I want. I'm I'm probably never gonna need really need that 
twenty dollars steak. Maybe not. Probably not. So I'm probably not. You know, if you if you learn to use the free tool, you're probably not going to need to spend the nine hundred dollars or the four hundred dollars if you're a student. It, it can be pricey. <laughs> So, all right, what do you got for me? What do you got for me? Well, let's see. There's another one from Peter Lewis. He was watching BBC iPlayer because he wanted to uh, watch a back episode of Torchwood. Oh. At the time it was on, we had visitors. So the morning after, I watched the episode of Category 5 and then watched Torchwood. Okay. In the program, there was an actor who looked very much like you. Like Not me. me, you. Like me. Who played a baddie. Oh, Definitely. Of like course. It. Okay, so Look I've out, sent you man. a picture to see Look if out. you think it resembles you. A picture. A picture. I've also sent you the link to the program clip as well. P.S. When you see the clip, I hope you are not into mass murder. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, Robbie. Many Does thanks, he look Peter. like me? Peter, Peter, Peter. Well, you know. He he has a lot more hair than you do. That's true. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's true. He uh, it it kind of reminds me, and maybe it's just because it's me. You tell me in the chat room if you think that 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 man looks like me. Um, but it kind of reminds me of every time we see a bald man, my kids pipe up and go, "Daddy, Daddy, that man looks like you." <laughs> kind of reminds me of that but maybe it's because it's just me so I want to hear if the chat room agrees that uh, that, that indeed looks like me I assure well, you that uh, whatever it is that he did I do not condone well <laughs> thanks for the email yeah I show him that picture Robbie oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay um, Peter, 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 one question at a show. Okay, here's another one from Peter. <laughs> really? <laughs> Dear Robbie, I would like to ask you a question regarding USB sticks. There are four ways of storing data on a medium. The first way is magnetic, i.e. audio cassette, videotape, or SD card with the one and zeros stored magnetically. Another way is to store the ones and zeros optically, which produces peaks and ridges into a CD, DVD, or Blu-ray disc. The peaks and the troughs, troughs, I think, are cut with a laser. The peaks are the LS, and the zeros are the troughs. Okay. Um, another laser is used to read the peaks and troughs. We're going way back to Yeah, okay. LPs. The next method is used in computer memory, which is two transistors connected to so that one of them is on and the other one is off. Flip-flop. This is repeated many, many times to store lots of bits of information. Since one flip-flop is used to store one bit of information, a small battery is used to keep the flip-flops in their states. What I cannot understand is when you take a USB stick out of a computer after storing some information on it, how does it keep some information on the stick when there is no power applied to the stick? Is there a small battery which keeps the information on the stick when the stick is pulled out of the computer? Basically, I really want to know how it, how is, how it, how does it keep the data on the stick? And if the stick, for example, was not in use for months on end, mm -hmm. does the data degrade on the stick? Many thanks. Peter. Hmm. Peter, I think it's it's an interesting question. You've got one of these, and how does it actually yeah. store the data without a battery or, you know, if it's been sitting on the shelf? Or, or the data, for that matter. <laughs> sure. Have you missed me? Tons. <laughs> Peter, um, it sounds like you know quite a bit about data storage mechanisms and things yeah, like that. Yeah, so could you research that and get back to us? No. No, but I, I think <laughs> as, as Eric was reading this, I was sitting here going, yeah. Not that you're anything but um, enlightening and, and enjoyable to listen to, but as I click my pen, it stays where it was. As I release the pen, it goes back to its original position. There's two toggles on this pen, so I can either have the pen out or I can have it in. Those are the two options. So a floating gate transistor, which is different than, than just a standard single gate transistor, contains basically two different options. You've got it's closed or it's open. And if it's closed, for example, there's uh, 
the electron actually gets captured between that and the control uh, transistor. So it can't be moved unless the electron, unless the charge changes. Ah. Right? So it really, I mean, thinking of it as, as a very, very tiny microscopic, um, JVSCC thinks that there's actually a tiny person inside this pen. How interesting. Yes. It is quite possible. It's an ESET pen. It could be a robot. <laughs> Lots of guesses in the chat room. Smurfs do it. Uh, thank you, D-Man. Um, but basically, you're looking at a, a floating uh, a floating gate transistor is, is a little bit different because it's got the two uh, the two transistors in it. So um, look look it up. I would say Wikipedia will probably have. I mean, Wikipedia is the basically the world's knowledge as far as that goes. I don't know if we want to search for floating gate transistor. I think you do want to. Floating gate MOSFET comes up. Might be an interesting read. Uh, this is a bit more general, I think. See if there's uses. Structure, modeling, simulation, application, applications. Neither of those really help us. Okay, let's go back to the old Google machine. Let's type uh, Wikipedia... Uh, USB flash media floating gate. There we go. Flash memory, Wikipedia. Flash memory is a non-volatile computer storage chip. And if we scroll down here, there we go. Floating gate transistor. And you'll be able to read up some information there. I, I guarantee you um, Wikipedia's got all that for you. But basically, it's like I say, you've got two positions. And that electron is going to get basically... Um, stuck in in between the control gate and the floating gate and so the floating gate can no longer move so then the change in the charge makes it so that the floating gate is in the second position so so you get millions and billions of these little tiny transistors and that's how your data is stored so it's really kind of interesting to think how, how did somebody yeah. think of this and if you look at it on a grand Actually, scale I'm impressed with this well, the pen is pretty yeah. impressive, uh, but if you think about it on a grand scale, yeah. you've got something that can move up or down, and if it's down, there's a bubble in between, so it can't go up okay. anymore. And it's like, it's it's really neat so that they use that for electrical storage. So how are those affected by? I know it's not magnetic media, but how is it affected by if you set it on top of a speaker magnet? It or still something? could, yeah. yeah. Well, because the electrons can can yeah. be moved, right? Mm, that's what I so, thought. Okay. Yeah. So you don't want to do that. Don't do it. Don't grab a, an old cassette but, uh, demagnetizer and, and clear. But, but I knew that it would hang <laughs> on to the, the data for years and years and years. Cause Definitely, I, yeah. Oh, years and years and years ago, they sent me a promotional USB stick, and it was yeah. like 128 megabytes. It was huge. Um, and then, yeah. And actually, it was huge, too, but uh, it, it doesn't fit <laughs> into some computer. Yeah, it won't fit right. into some USB yeah. ports uh, because there's housing around it. But uh, uh, I found a couple of files that I had on it from, like, 10 years ago. That's yeah, still good, eh? <laughs> yeah, it still worked. Very cool. Okay, we have a Thanks question. for the question. Yeah. We have a question from Joe. And uh, it's regarding Ubuntu 11.04. All right. How do I get the boot up sequence to show the devices it loads, etc.? It does this when I log out of Ubuntu, but not when I boot up. Hmm. That was the whole thing? That was the whole thing. That was it. Yeah. Brilliant. Happy so to wants to know the boot up sequence. wants to see it happen. There's a cool tool that's available a cool in tool. Ubuntu. A cool tool. I'm going to see if I have it in Synaptic Package Manager here. Let's see. It is called startup-manager. This is one way to do it. There it is. I guess it's just startup manager will do it. Grub use splash, splash screen configuration tool. And what it does is through a GUI, it lets you edit your configuration, right? So show boot splash, uncheck that. Show text during boot is cool. What is kind of cool, the reason that I brought that up first, Startup Manager has a cool thing where it actually kind of does it in a graphical mode. So it's a little bit different than just like okay. using Grub or something. But then if you don't want to go that route, just go the old school way. And uh, the way we're going to do that is edit your actual Grub configuration. 
So <laughs> people laugh at me when I go to terminal to uh, to do sudo. So what I'll do is instead of going to terminal, I'm going to go gk sudo. All right, so that's the sudo command for within gtk. Uh, so I want to gedit. That's my editor. etc slash defaults slash grub, I believe it is. If I... Oh, no, default. Correction. There we go. If I click it, I will know. There we go. Okay. Because I am GK sudoed, super user, I'm able to edit this file. If you did not use sudo GK sudo, you're not going to be able to do that. Here's here's the line that's causing you to not have text mode. Okay. They they can't. What is happening here? It's true. Oh. <laughs> All right. This line here. Grub cmd line Linux default equals. There's two problems here. One, you've got a splash screen that's graphical, and two, you've got quiet. Remember how in the you know, traditional Linux days you could hit escape and it would display your text, right? That's kind of an ideal situation. Default to the splash screen, but if you hit escape, it would show you the text. So if you would like it to run in that mode, all you have to do is remove the word quiet so that it's now going to look like that. So you still get the splash screen, but if you hit escape, it will be text. All right. Now, if you want to take it one step further and only ever be text, just delete the whole thing so that it says, quote, quote, and it's empty. All right. That's going to do text mode for you in Grub. That's all there is to it. Easy breezy. Because you're super user, you can save that file. Oh, you'll also need to do a Grub update. So here you go with your terminal. Accessories, terminal. Okay. Once you're there. sudo update grub da -da. generating grub cfg and it goes through and does it all for you and then it's done that's all there is to it cool thanks for the question lots of questions tonight and we better uh, jump into the news, and we'll come oh, back to your okay, questions. We have more questions. We got lots and <coughs> lots of questions, but I'll I'll <coughs> let Eric jump into the news because uh, it is that time, and uh, we'll be back with uh, with more of your questions uh, right after that. All right. You can talk from the Category Five <laughs> TV newsroom. There, there was a note on the screen telling me to shut up for three to five seconds. <laughs> It's like five to ten. <laughs> this this is abuse. I think this would be. I'm going to talk to uh, the union about this. A free open source Windows clone, React OS, has been in development for over a decade. Has caught the eye of Russian President Dmitry Medvedev. A student at a Russian high school the president visited recently gave Mr. Medvedev. The president, a brief overview of the project and asked him for one million euros. The system's developers say it runs on all Windows programs, but is much faster than its Microsoft equivalent. If it gets a financial boost, it could be usable in the near future, they add. The student's presentation must have been impressive since Mr. Medvedev replied that he'll think about it, adding that the project was indeed very interesting. Yahoo! Chief Executive Carol Bartz has been fired by the internet company after two and a half years in the top job. The company said in a statement that Ms. Bartz was removed from the board of directors effective immediately. Tim Morris, Yahoo's chief financial officer, will take over the position. Stockholders seem to be sided with the board of directors since Yahoo shares jumped more than 6% in after hours trading once news of the firing broke. Millions of Microsoft users were left unable to access some online services overnight because of a major service failure. Hotmail and SkyDrive were among the services affected, but particularly embarrassing is the temporary loss of Office 365, the company's alternative to Google's suite of online apps. Microsoft said the issue appeared to be related to the Internet's DNS address system. Such a major problem is likely to raise questions about the reliability of cloud computing versus local storage. 
Its service also went offline briefly in mid-August, less than two months after it launched. The latest disruption is believed to have lasted for around two and a half hours. Last week, Hillary talked about the fact that space junk is getting out of hand with a staggering estimate of 370,000 pieces of junk floating in orbit of Earth at speeds of up to 22,000 miles per hour. How many is that in kilometers per hour? Twice now, NASA is <laughs> warning that there's a 1 in 3,200 chance that pieces of a defunct satellite could hit someone when it plunges from orbit in the next month or so. It would be the first time in history someone was injured by space debris. The Upper Atmosphere Research Satellite, or UARS for short, yes, likely pronounced... Um, Yes, ran out of fuel in 2005 and could land on any of six continents. Uh, most of the satellite is expected to burn up during re-entry, but a hefty half-ton of metal will still plummet to the Earth's surface. It's being tracked by the Joint Space Operations Center of U.S. Strategic Command at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, but NASA admits it has little to no idea where it will come down or when. It predicts that it will enter the atmosphere in late September, but it could be October. The space agency said that the crash site will be anywhere between 57 degrees north latitude and 57 degrees south latitude, and the remains could scatter over a 500-mile area. A spokesman for NASA adds, if you find something you think may be a piece of URS, do not touch it. Contact a local law enforcement office for assistance. Get the full stories at Category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at Category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Eric Kidd. It's kind of scary. Eh? I don't. I can't remember any uh, time in my lifetime. That's a fairly wide of. range and... Very yeah. long range, too. You look at uh, at the map that they're giving us and saying, okay, well, somewhere in here is where this thing is going to fall. Could still fall in the ocean. They don't really That's know. That's like, yeah. It's kind of scary. Uh, thinking about... It looks like if you're really, really way down in the Antarctica or yeah, way, basically anywhere, way north, you're probably okay. Anywhere where there's population, yeah. you're, wow. you're at risk. And I, I compared that to Category 5 TV viewers. And this is what it looks like. And uh, it, it's interesting to see, even from that, that population is really within that, within yeah. those lines. Um, so, well, you know, we're really, really hopeful that... Uh, there, there's still some patches of water in there. There are some patches of water, yeah. Yeah. So, but... Um, wow. Really reiterates the fact that it's it's problematic that uh, it's like that year two thousand problem. Nah, it'll never be a problem in our lifetime. You wonder, but, but but what's happened is they had all these satellites up in space and orbiting the Earth, and they had some old space debris that was up there, and then there was a a test missile sent up to uh, that was a an anti satellite missile or whatever or anti satellite spacecraft oh, boy. that destroyed a couple of them and caused massive amounts of debris. Oh, so now we've got this problem where, okay, well, it's pretty serious. There's lots and lots of junk just flying around the earth, and this is probably not going to be the last big piece that could possibly and, and you hit know you figure probably a piece of something this size well that'd burn do. up an well, iPod no, would I definitely mean, burn but, up, <laughs> but even if a, a piece <laughs> that size smack in the earth at uh, what speed oh, yeah. are we talking uh twenty thousand it's gonna be a heck yeah. of a crater, <laughs> well, yeah, five hundred miles, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think? Uh, we'd, we'd open up the, uh, the cat phone to you tonight. Uh, if you'd like to give us a call, 705-739-1056. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you're welcome to give us a ring and let us know what you think about all this space debris and, and what NASA is now saying about this uh, orbital satellite that, uh, that is quite possibly going to hit the Earth. So somebody took exception to me saying, well, there's still a few little patches of water there. The, the, the Atlantic and Pacific are just patches of water now. But a lot of land. Okay, That's what's well, scary. You know, there's a 70% chance that it'll hit water. Uh, one suggestion in the chat room is uh, Invincible Mutant, who says, give the debris to Cat 5. 
TV. <laughs> and I would welcome that because we recently did an e-waste run, and I just took a bunch of old computers, and I got like 75 bucks. Nice. So I wonder what a six-ton satellite would, uh, would give me at e-waste. Now we're oh, thinking. Boy. Now we're thinking. I know you're supposed to call the police, but instead, if you want to just kind of box it up and call ship it Cat over. Call Cat 5. <laughs> Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you by Pogoplug, cat5.tv slash Pogoplug. And you can also, uh, I'd also encourage you to check out one of our other sponsors, which is Planet Calypso, free online game at cat5.tv slash Calypso. So we'll leave the uh, the phone line open for just a, a few minutes time. We'll uh, we'll jump right back into viewer questions. We've got lots of those. Well, we have one here from John Zimmerman. Hey, John. And it's uh, running Linux Mint 11. Okay. Okay, I have just purchased a black and clear Pogo Plug Pro on eBay. Okay. But I'm having trouble installing the .tar f- file oh. type in Linux. <clears throat> I have never had to deal with these types of files, and I am fairly new to Linux. Everything I try based on reading forums does not work. Thank you for such a great show. I don't know what it is about Canada and Canadians, but you all seem so nice and relaxed. <laughs> I could not imagine a Canadian having something like American road rage. I yelled at somebody the other day when I was well, driving. Well, no, you would. But yeah. Thanks again, John, a.k.a. <laughs> Blythe 55 from Atlanta, Georgia. Cheers, John. Hey, a big shout out to Atlanta, Georgia. Indeed. All yeah. right. I, I think they're... They have a know, hockey team down there. Any, anywhere you go, you're going to run into people that you want to call a UARS satellite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> he tripped over that one. I, I almost sounded got, out, people. Almost got the out. giggles. UARS. <laughs> <laughs> but you uh, are being such a the, the, the key point is just to just to be cool, my babies, as as Conan <laughs> would say. All right, I'm looking at their website here, pogoplug.com. Downloads PC Mac Linux. <laughs> what like Linux isn't PC? Come on, and it gives me a tar.gz file. Look at what happens. Ooh. Okay, so tar.gz. First of all, let's back up. Let's say okay. Well, what is a tar.gz? Or in Canada, GZ. It's a compressed file, sorry. If you're familiar with, with Windows... <laughs> if you're familiar with Windows, you'll think about a, a zip file, which is fantastic. I could go into nostalgia with a zip file. You're compressing your head. Oh, a zip sorry. file is basically a compressed archive, okay? So a tar.gz is a tarred... No, it's a, a gz, a gzipped tar file. So the tar means that it's a, it could be multiple files compressed into, not compressed, pardon me, compiled into one file. The GZ represents that it's gzipped, so it's then compressed. So you've got a tar.gz means that it's possibly a bunch of files all in one file, and then the GZ means that it's shrunk down to be quick download. So a tar.gz file is a compressed archive of something. So in the case of uh, Poco plug, okay. You open up that file, and it has within that file the Pogo plug fs file, okay. So what do you do with that now? How do you install that? What do you do? So all we're going to do is just hit extract, and we're going to throw that in. Let's say your home folder. Make a folder called uh, Pogo plug, all lowercase, okay. And then I'm just going to extract it there. So it's there. I'm going to show the files, and now forget about the tar.gz. I have this pogo plug fs file sitting in that folder. Now that is a script file. Right click on it, go properties, permissions, and you'll see it's allowed executing file as a program, but you can't double click on it or anything because it's a terminal program. So if I double click on that, it's not going to seemingly do anything because it's it's waiting for terminal input, which means if I bring up my terminal, applications accessories, terminal. Now that I've created that mystical folder called pogo plug remember we went all lowercase so cd pogo plug okay i hit po and then tab because i'm already in home so you might also go cd home pogo plug okay that's what the tilde means and now i'm in there so now if i do an ls which is like dos dir pogo plug fs is there and if i go dot slash which means run a program in the current folder pogo plug fs hit enter uh, error while loading shared libraries. Do you get that? 
because that's a different issue altogether. Uh, on my other computers that I've ever done this on, it loads up just fine, and I'm going to get um, information there about um, about what I'm supposed to do because it's a command line. It's basically like a command line tool. So you're going to run it at, at, with the switches of your username, your password, where you want to mount your pogo plugs to, and then it's going to be mounted. So um, I would love to, for you to get to that point. Tell me if you're having that shared library issue too, because it looks like I'm missing Elf Class 64 on my system, um, which I can I can repair. But we, we I think that's probably an unrelated issue. So, all right, let me so know. So, what's Invincible Mutant saying here? What's up? He wants to uh, ch mod U plus X on Pogo Plug FFs. Well, it already is because oh. um, it came out of the tar as an oh, executable okay. file. But yes, if it's not, uh, then then Invincible Mutant is correct. Remember when I right-clicked on that file and I chose... Let's go back to it. That is an important point. Thank you, Invincible Mutant. Typically, you're, it's going to already be plus X or executable. I just save that into Pogo Plug. So if I look at that file, right-click on it in my GUI, go Properties, Permissions, Allow Executing as a Program is checked. If that is not checked, you need to check it. Oh. But what you can also do is from the terminal back where we were and it is an important point because you can't execute a program that's not executable so pogo plug so what I can do now is I can go chmod plus x for make it executable pogo plug fs and then hit enter and now it is the exact same as if I had it checked off that checkbox very same thing but done through the terminal instead okay thanks for the tip and thank you for the question. I hope that that helps at least point you in the right direction. But again, it's a command line tool. It's a terminal tool. You need to run dot slash pogo plug fs space and then all the commands. So uh, you probably could type dot slash pogo plug fs space dash dash help. And that will output, um, like I'm, I'm using DOS as the example, what you used to when, uh, get when you would go slash question mark. It's like the help information, right? So oh, there you go. Cool. Do we have time for more questions, or are we... Uh... Um, let's jump into a real quick tutorial that I want to give you All right. about how to get LibreOffice um, to run faster on your system, or at least seemingly so. <clears throat> Zippity zip, zip, zip. All right. I'll have a sip of my water. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One of the things <clears throat> that you're seeing on uh, in the computing landscape these days, Windows 8 is coming out. Guess what? Uh-oh. It boots faster. Nice. That's like the thing these days. It's like, oh, well, does your computer boot in three seconds? Okay, let's compare operating systems. Let's put Linux, Mac, and Windows side by side on identical computers, push the power buttons, and see which one boots up faster. Because that's the one that I'm going to go with because it's so fast. It's ridiculous. Come on. <laughs> I'm detecting a slight hint of sarcasm. No, here. it's it's really ridiculous. Who cares how fast it boots? I want to know how fast... It runs my applications, how well it performs, yeah. and the boot thing doesn't really matter. But we have this perception that boot time and load time is, is really where it's at. <clears throat> With that perception in mind, we can take LibreOffice and make it zippity-zip fast. Okay? Zippity-zip fast. Yeah. It's not just... This works for OpenOffice, too. Of okay. course, LibreOffice is a fork of OpenOffice, so if you're running either or, this will work for you. But somebody said to me that oh, I, I just can't stand LibreOffice because it's so slow. Somebody said that to me, and I said, no, it's not. You just need to do this. Let's, let's demonstrate. No, no, no drum rolls. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go into Office, LibreOffice Writer. Okay, that's like my word. Here it comes, here it comes. My Are you timing word. it? word. Yeah, look at that. Okay. And it's up. That's what they're talking about. Okay. We, we don't want to have to wait for five seconds for our applications to load anymore, which is understandable. We don't want to wait for our computers to boot anymore. Let's do this. Edit. Uh, no. Tools. Beg your pardon. Options. Okay, so this is the LibreOffice or OpenOffice options menu. You see on the left-hand side... LibreOffice or OpenOffice are already pulled down. Go to the Memory tab. Really, really simple. There's a SysTray Quick Starter that you can enable. If you have that 
quick start module installed, which most people will. Simply check that off. Hit OK. And let's close LibreOffice. And we're done. All right. Would you like to know how much of a su substantive I was going to ask difference that that made? Okay. Yeah. Well. I, yeah. I had two questions related. Okay. To well, that. what's what's your question? Okay. So how lickety splitly will it open? That was, I okay. guess, everybody's question. How much of a resource pig is this little uh, mm, quick start thing? Sure. I don't think it's much at all, especially okay. when you consider these days uh, every system has got four gigs plus of RAM, right? That's True. what we have to be yeah. mindful of, um, is that systems these days are a lot different than when we had one meg of RAM and it was, and we really had to conserve. It's not really the same anymore. So it's a I different remember landscape. when I went from four megabytes up to eight megabytes on my 486. That was big. Whoa! Yeah. Smoking. <laughs> so that's all we've done. I'm going to go applications, I got office. I want to know how much memory is wasting, too. Okay, LibreOffice yeah. Writer. It's not really wasting, though, when this happens. Okay, I'm going to go three, two, one, click. There it is. Wow. Okay, so the instantaneous as far as loading. We should actually have timed the first one. Well, you, you can do that if you want. You can see how much well, faster it is. Well, we can go back into the... Uh, that's literally how fast it was. You'll see that you now have a taskbar icon up here, which is your quick starter, okay? And from there, you can, in fact, launch. Oh, Zoom kind of messes with me sometimes. Let's get out of Zoom. From that quick start icon, you can launch any of those applications. You can open documents and things like that. Let's see if we can actually determine how much memory is being used by quick start. It's, it's so unsubstantial, though, that Agamotto really... Agamotto wanted to know, too. Really? Wasn't was not just I asking that question. All right. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, what was it called? Quick start. Want to know the executable name? I'll just run top. Any other questions in the meantime that are coming in the chat room? Um, I'm using Top Cadwell. Yeah, just got to find it. Don't know the executable name. Let's see. Okay. I'm not seeing questions here. Okay. Any questions for us? Uh, just jump in the chat room, category5.tv. And, of course, the cat phone is still open, 705-739-1056. Is that like a bat phone? Yeah, pretty much like that. What? Yeah. Has anyone got a Fly Touch 3 Android tab? Oh. And has anyone got an HTC HD 2 running Android? Maybe not yet. No. If you can find the executable name for me for that, I'll tell you how, how big it is. Uh, so, But I don't know it, so I'm not going to take oh. too much time to look at it. There we go. It's a cool tip. Run a mem check with and without it running. Yeah. And see how much memory you have. I could do that. Doesn't seem to be uh, making really your, matter, your, 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 your system uh, <laughs> lag much. No. If you need your uh, office writer open quickly, yeah. <laughs> use it. If it's you like, don't, uh, wait five much seconds. Of a, how much of a difference has it made, right? It's like, it's absolutely incredibly minimal. I mean, I've only got four gigs of RAM, and that's like, that's the minimum. Uh, Spectre 1055, like the tutorial you did on Open Shot, but Jeez. favors KDen Live. Mm. Could you do a segment on KDen Live in the future? It's great software. Yeah, sure. I can do that. Of course, people, you know, a lot of people are running the GNOME desktop, so I don't know if the, you know, we'd, we'd have to look at the fact, we'd have to be very clear that we're getting some KDE libraries and stuff with that, but... Definitely. would love to take a look at it. And tell us, uh, pop us an email and let me know what, what it is that you really love about, uh, about KDE, KDE and Live. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely feature it on the show if you like. Sure. All right. Cool. We've got just a couple of minutes left, gang. So nobody's calling the cat phone. That's fine. But you're welcome to. Uh, if you want to just give a quick viewer testimonial and let us know what you think of the show, uh, pick up the phone, give us a call, 705-739-1056. If you want to say hi to Eric, who's been away for a long time. Long time. Great to see you, my friend. Hey, we have a, a correction. Do we have time to read a 
A correction? We've got three minutes. Dear Robbie, I had gathered that Hillary would not be on this week's episode to read my note herself. Ah, she was offended about the looks I give her. Um, <laughs> I wish to issue a correction to her statement of last week. Mm. The language spoken by people in Israel is not, as she mentioned, Israeli. It is, in fact, Hebrew, although there are several right. other languages, including Arabic, spoken there. She advised that she could not learn to speak every language, which is understandable. To assist her in her education, I have arranged an excellent education tool for her, courtesy of YouTube, where Grover learns how to say good morning in Hebrew. Mm. And there's a YouTube link, and yeah, did you want to put that up there? Well, I don't have any sound on the demo system, but oh, I'll, I'll okay. find it for you, and I'll share well, it with you for sure. YouTube.com slash... Link. I'll put a link in the okay. show notes for episode number 208. That's very cool. And yeah, of course, it's, uh, it's predominantly going to be Hebrew in Israel, I would expect. Yeah, I think so. there's a lot of English spoken, too. Of yeah, course, true. when you read this... It will be nighttime, so the appropriate phrase in Hebrew would be Leila Tov, pronounced Lila Tovi, or a good <laughs> so night. So you were way off. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you put the you pronunciation. You should have put the pronunciation there. at the beginning yeah. there, GWG. <laughs> <laughs> Category 5 is an international show. I do usually keep my secular and religious life separate, but as I am on the subject of Hebrew, the Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah begins on the evening of September 28th, and this begins the Jewish New Year, the birthday of the world. Rather than risk one of you trying to pronounce the traditional seasonal wishes, I will express them to you and the entire community in English. May you immediately be inscribed and sealed for a good year. Shalom. Gadget Wisdom Guru. Cheers, Guru. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the info and, uh, and, and appreciate and the, the email. The lesson and the, and, and the good wishes. Well, it's incredible that we have such an, inc- such an amazing representation around the world here at Category 5. Like, if, if we look at the fact that, you know, okay, well, there is America and how things look on the 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 coast it's kind of like when somebody gets one of those bee beards you know that they're apiary and they they have the bees hanging off there it's the, the, the bumblebees yeah. yeah i gotcha kind of a nice little image you have there okay but it's because we're we're represented all over and and i think part of it as well i mean look at germany and and the uk it's just outstanding how many viewers we have in in the area but what happens is is that because because the show is actually live and because we broadcast live, uh, Guru, as you know, um, sometimes things slip your mind or, or it's like you you just are like moving through question to question. And it's like, what was I talking about again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't they speak Israeli? Over, you know, it's like just one of those things. So I, like, but I appreciate the email very much. You know, people might think we speak Canadian. Canadian. And, and, and sometimes we do <laughs> speak Canadian-y. canadian <laughs> Hoser. <laughs> uh, I'll try to references. behave in the future. How many Mackenzie references can we get into the show? He had to fit one in and right at the end. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't sure how many notes we'd get away without a copyright infringement. <laughs> it was under 30 seconds, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they're Canadian. They're very nice. Mm. So they would never, uh, they'd never. They'd never get road rage. No, never. Heck no. And a beer. <laughs> and a tree. <laughs> Good times. Sure. Well, yeah. we're we're right out of time, everybody. Nice to see everybody. I was just, you know, I'm just kind of saying it's it's neat that we have viewers all over the world. And, and we honestly, we can't even keep up with all of the different areas that are represented on the show. And, and it's become to the point where the whole world is watching. We so, should do a road trip. There you go. We'll do each of the who's, different continents. Who's paying for that? Oh. It's a great the viewership idea. will pay for the, the road trip. <laughs> if every viewer ha- <laughs> represented one dollar, <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. It's been fun. Great having you here, Eric. Hey, great it was to great see you again. to be here. Thank yeah. you for having me. Does this work? Are you are you done working on Tuesday nights? No, I'm probably going to be busy again. But I'm going to yeah. try to get back again soon. We'll, but, we'll uh, get you back here <laughs> soon enough. Oh, sorry. He's such a child. Kid. Such a child. Just such a kid. kid. Just a kid. <laughs> I should have thought of that. I should have thought of that. Oh, you've heard it before. I've once or twice. <laughs> and every Have person great... thinks they're the first. <laughs> exactly. I didn't say it. Have a great week, everybody. See ya.